Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren, and this is another 3D prints in the workshop. Something a little bit out of the ordinary for me. We're going to look at gridfinity and uh, how I'm going to use that to improve my router bit table. Now, as part of this, of course, I'm going to make a whole heap of new models available for you to download. But the main point of this video is to give you an idea of when you might want to use the gridfinity system or any other grid system versus when it's best to avoid a grid system. So uh, make sure you watch all the way through to the end. We'll do some pros and cons at the end and um, you can see if this is right for you. To date, when I've 3D printed draw storage modules for my tools, I've made them so they fit the whole drawer so nothing can slide around. After all, it's just the individual tool I'm removing from the holder, not the holder from the drawer. But when I built my new router table, I transferred my router bit holders over from the previous router table that I built and they were designed to fit that drawer, not this drawer, which is significantly wider. And hence they slide around a little bit. And I've also got more router bits uh, that don't fit in here specifically, like this one, which is too tall to stand upright in the drawer and it's gonna to need to be stored lying down. So I've decided to give this gridfinity system a go. Uh, now, I must admit, I don't like the idea that it's 42 mil. I very nearly made my own 50 mil one. And yes, ALCH has made his 55 millimeter one. But anyway, in spite of the fact that I think 42 is a weird measurement, that seems to be the standard. So I figured anything I designed for this system will be useful for other people as well. So that's the way I'm going to go. Okay, so obviously the first step is to empty the drawer. This is down here. This is a deep draw. Anyway. Alright, that's the drawer empty um, and the glue's left some marks on the bottom but not the end of the world. I'm not going to repaint the drawer. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is an 8x8 matrix. That's as big as you can print on the uh, Prusa XL for uh, one of these. And I've got a couple of uh, 4x4s which is as big as you can print on the Mini. What I'm doing first off printed these ahead of time uh, knowing I probably need more. So this is the grid system I used. I think there's a couple of different ones available for the gridfinity system uh, without the magnets, for example. I think the magnets would be ideal if you had a metal-based drawer because you could put your magnets in there and you wouldn't have to stick them down with glue. Uh, the magnets would hold the grids in place. Something I've noticed and something to watch out for if you're going to print these for yourself is when people make them, or when the people made the ones I downloaded, they made these edges as thick as the middles, which means that if you butt another one right up against it, you get a double width here, and you can't overlap your trays. I'll show you what I mean. Here, I've left them as they were, and you can see we've got a double width, and that just will not sit in there. So on this one, I've actually chopped the edge off, so as we can overlap. Now you might be able to download the grids without the double width edge and there are some apps for just designing the grid yourself and there may be a setting in them for turning that off. So just be aware it's there. Like I say, I've chopped mine off here so I can go over. And on here it doesn't matter so much because I'm, I'm just using it in blocks of 4x4 four four anyway. So these were all in a box as part of a kit, the Lee D4 bits, as were these bits for the Incra jig system. They were all in a box before. My raised panel bits, the green ones at least, were in a separate box. Uh, what else was in a box? Oh yeah, my slot cutting bits over here were in a separate box before. Everything else was in individual holders. But uh, anyway, so this is the finished product, so to speak. They may be rearranged and that is one of the little joys of grid gridfinity is you can take things off and, you know, Put them somewhere else and they won't slide around, which is great. I may well change the layout yet. This isn't necessarily the final end of it all. If you're wondering what these little red pieces are, they're just little plugs I made. So as I know, I'm not actually missing a route a bit from there. So don't spend time hunting for it. No, that's just uh, a spare slot for future expansion. And because other people will be using the trays for different things, I should imagine. So this allows for other users as well. And I've done the same over here with my eight millimeter bits. I've just got some eight millimeter dowels in there to indicate that there's nothing missing. 
and over here on my 6.35 or quarter inch bits, same again. I've just got some six millimeter dowels in this case, just shutting them off. Now I was going to color code the system uh, and started out doing that, but I just kept running out of filament. Initially it was going to be that the half inch shank bits were gold and the um, quarter inch shank bits were red. And to a degree I've done that. The quarter inch shank bits are all still red, <laughs> which is good. Every one of these red things is a quarter inch bit. Over here with the half inch bits, I ran out of gold and I moved on to orange <laughs> and I ran out of orange and I moved on to yellow. Over here, the reason this is a different color, of course, is these aren't quarter inch. These are metric eight millimeter shanks. Not something that crops up often, but I've made some expansion just in case I end up with more of them. This tray over here is because this bit is actually too tall to stand up in the drawer and shut the drawer. So I've made that for longer bits for lying them down. And of course I've got my screwdrivers in that little container there uh, for doing my adjustments on my various jigs. Okay, I've already mentioned this, but I think it's worth mentioning again, is that there are multiple grid systems out there for storage. Uh, Gridfinity is not the only one. Uh, neither is ALCH's 55 millimeter grid. And um, you know, grid systems have been around for a long time, used by other companies. These are just new to 3D printing, that's all. Uh, so when I give you the pros and cons, I'm not having a go at anybody, this is just what I found is useful for me. So let's have a look at what I found great and perhaps not so great about grid-based systems. All right, let's start out with the pros. I always like to do the pros first, and that is that having a grid-based system stops things sliding around in your drawers, even if you remove one of your trays. So uh, I, mean, I probably don't need to demonstrate this, but let's do it anyway. There you go, as you can see, I just closed the drawer and opened it again. Nothing has slid, everything is where it's meant to be. So that is the big plus of having a grid system in your drawers. And I think one of the other great big pluses is the fact that you can rearrange things quite easily. Uh, and the grid system facilitates that quite well. As you can see, I could shuffle things around quite a bit. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter if you have gaps, you can fill those later if need be. Now, what about the cons of using a grid system in one of your drawers? Well, firstly, uh, you've got to print out a grid, so it uses more plastic, but also the grid raises the height of your trays, and having to have this matching system at the bottom also raises the height of your trays, which means that for tall bits like this or something else, you could be doing something else entirely with the system, um, you've got to allow for that. And we're looking at about five mil. So you end up with about five millimeters less clearance in a drawer than if you didn't have the Gridfinity system. Not overly a problem. Uh, after all, you, know, you can lie things down. So, but that's just one of the things. And the other is, and this is again, any grid system, is you have to make your parts in multiples of that grid. So this is a two by two. Obvious here, let's grab this one. And you can see that this one is a three before. Now, it's harder to see with something like router bits because they're fairly or relatively small. But when you start looking at other things, it becomes apparent that you often have to make your trays bigger than you otherwise would because something might overlap into, say, a third or a fourth grid and you have to allow for that, even though it's only using a fraction of that section. Now, as you can see, this incretural is just over three squares on this system. So you've got to use a fourth square just for that tiny bit of extra. So you end up with something that's four squares wide instead of three, and you have to use a heap of extra space. Now, I'm going to utilize this space. I'm going to put spare pencils and uh, stuff like that in it. So it's not going to go to waste. But... I still consider that to be one of the downsides of a grid system. I would just make this to fit otherwise, and it wouldn't be an issue, and I'd use less plastic. So an obvious con you can see here as well is that if your drawer width or length or both aren't exact multiples of the grid size, then you end up with gaps. Uh, and as you can see, there's a fair size gap there. 
Now, I could have sort of split the difference and, uh, you know, put half of that either side, left a gap at the edges. Perhaps that would be more useful for a lot of people. But I thought I'll leave it up in the middle. Two reasons. One, I can show you. It makes it a lot easier to show you if it's there. And two, um, it makes a great demarcation line between the half inch and quarter inch. And while I said at the beginning of the video I wasn't too keen on the 42 millimeter grid, at least it's smaller than a 50 or a 55 millimeter grid, which means you can make your tray smaller. So you could, in fact, make your grids 20 millimeters in size and you'd waste less space, but you'd use more plastic because you'd have more plastic in your grid and in your feet at the bottom of your trays. So it's a balance, and I'm actually starting to appreciate why Zach chose 42 now after having used it. It's, uh, it might be an unusual measurement, 42 millimetres, but I think it's probably more useful than 50 or 55, to be honest. Just one more pro and one more con each. One of the great things about Gridfinity is people have made a heap of things for it already, so there's a lot of stuff you can download without having to design it for yourself. However, <laughs> when you do need to design it for yourself, if what you want isn't out there, it is a tad trickier. I found that myself. It is a tad trickier to design for uh, a grid system than it is to do something with a flat bottom. It's not the end of the world. If you can use Fusion 360, you can figure it out and you'll work your way around it. All right, hopefully that's all been of some use. Um, as always, I will make the models available for you to download for free from Printables. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.